Hello everybody and welcome back to the burrow. So today, like the title says, we're going to be doing a super worm farm. To do that, I'm going to go over the items that you're going to need. It's pretty simple. First thing you need is these totes. Some people use the three drawer tote or made tote. Um, some people use just the bigger ones. I'm starting out with a very small one, just a shoebox size, because I'm starting out with a small farm. We're just going to kind of test it, see how it works. And it's not hard to just move to a bigger one. And you understand why later, because everything kind of just move from one to another anyway. So I have three of these. This is the only one I have the holes in already because I only need to start with one. And you'll understand that in a bit. Uh, you're gonna need food to put in there. So most people use the, uh, just the quick oats. You can also um, get like roach chow. Some people use, there's, there's a bunch of things that people actually use. I'm just gonna use the oats um, and fresh fruit, like carrots and stuff like that in there for them for water. Um, you're also going to need, obviously, tongs to move things around. You're going to want to use something that can divide them up. A lot of people will use Dixie cup type things, small Dixie cups. Um, just anything you can divide and put one super worm in by itself and isolate it. So what I like to use, actually, this is my first time doing it just, since I like to use it, but I've seen a lot of people using on videos as I research this. I really like this idea is you use just an old plastic tape tackle box and it comes with a bunch of dividers. Now this one unfortunately has the big one that I would rather have had all small, but this is plenty of holes for what I'm doing. And um, you can get them, there's there's tool dividers like for screw dividers, uh, some people use the uh, dividers for pills, anything like that, easy to divide them up, um, it's very simple. Now you're also going to need something to punch holes, because you have to punch holes in this and obviously this, and you can use a Dremel tool with the drill bit, or you can use, like I'm going to use a soldering iron right here. Uh, if you use a soldering iron, which I prefer to use for the plastic. Make sure it's well ventilated. It tends to make a lot of smoke and chemicals come off the plastic, so it's best to do it in a well ventilated area. And the last thing you're gonna need is obviously a bunch of super worms. I got a hundred of them for I think it was four fifty at the Taylor show that I go to all the time. So it's pretty cheap to start. And see, he's got them in the same thing. I think this is actually the the brand stuff that you can get like fifty pound bags out. I think that's what he uses. But it's pretty, almost the same thing as they use in the quick oats. So, let's get started. Uh, set these aside, you don't need that just yet. First thing you need to do is set up your tackle box or whatever you're gonna use to divide it. Um, first thing I wanna do is I do wanna take the sticker off because, well, that's just ugly and annoying. So let's see if I can get it off without, I apologize for the sound. No sticky stuff. I'm, am I'm amazed. That was pretty simple. Now you just want to put one hole over each one of the sections where you were going to put a super worm possibly. Um, okay, so that actually is plenty of room. I don't have a lot of cord here, so I'm going to show you a few and then I'll just skip. So it's just real simple. I just put a hole through. You see all the smoke coming off? Yeah, that's not really good for you. So make sure you do it well ventilated area, maybe a fan blowing. Um, even in the large ones. I'm only going to put one in each of these large ones. You'll see. I'll explain it to you in a bit. Just, this takes almost no time at all. It's pretty quick. This is why I like the soldering iron compared to a drill. There's no cracking. It goes right in, right out. All done. It's that quick and easy. Now let me unplug it so that it can cool down. I have a stand sitting over here. Um, pick it up. So if you're going to use one, make sure you have something to set it on. Mine actually came with a stand because these things stay hot for a long time when you're done using them. Okay, so now we have this. What we're going to do is we want to put super worms actually in here in each one of the compartments separately. So to do that, actually, we're going to go and put them in here just so we can spread it out and find them all. There we go. You see, that's a hundred super worms. In a tub like this, even a small one, I could probably hold a thousand or so. So I'm not too worried about starting it off in something this small. Eventually, if I get a ton, if it actually works out very well, I'll go to something bigger. So here we go. I'm gonna try to set this up to make you see more of what I'm doing. In there. Okay. So what you're looking for is kind of the biggest ones that you have in here. And just drop them in. Try to find something that look a little bit bigger. 
because the bigger ones are the more well-fed ones are the ones that are more likely to turn into the beetles. There we go. I want to get a bunch of them in here. No, that's too small. Actually, can't. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, see, like some of these, that's just too. <laughs> Where did I drop that one? Oh, of course. Right on the table. I got it. See, but here, this one here, that's. <laughs> wow. That is a quick one. Okay. This guy here is way too small to be used, but he's also very, very quick. Wow. Anyway, you want something that's more the bigger variety. See, like that, bigger, slower. And just divide them up in here. Here's a really big one. You put one per. Oh, that's another really big one. Look at that one. You can hear it thrashing around in there. That one's good. One per. I really wish I could have had more dividers, but this is plenty to start with. Oh, that's too small. There we go. Too small. Oh, there's a good one. I believe I have one in each hole. Okay, now that we have all these divided up, one in each section, close it up, give them no food or water, and just set them aside. And don't bother them for a while. Then, what we want to do is we want to add more oats to this. So we're going to open up that up, brand new container. Come on. So just give them plenty of oats. Then put some carrot in there or some other vegetable to give them moisture. And they will be good. And you put the lid on. These guys, and you set them aside, you now have just a box. These are for feeders. Um, you'll just be adding to this as you hopefully will get more. Now, I'm not going to do the holes right now, but you will put the holes in this. This is for the beetles. Um, let me explain how this works first. So you have all these divided up into these segments and alone. The reason you do that is it promotes them to go from the next stage of their evolution. See, these are just the larval form of beetles, these nightshade beetles. So what you're doing is when you put them apart, you stress them out, you don't give them food, and it forces them to go to their next stage of evolution, which is a pupa. It looks just like a, the, the, the cocoon off Pokemon, I swear, it's funny. Uh, I'll put a picture up for you of them. I don't have one right now. And they'll go like that for, I uh, guess, a couple weeks, and then uh, a beetle emerges. So you leave them in here, it takes usually a couple weeks for them to go into their pupa stage, a couple more weeks for them to come out into a beetle. Then what you do is you put the beetle in a setup very much like your dubia, your lateralis roaches, all the same thing. I'm going to have nothing in here, so I'm not going to do the whole year. I'm just going to show you what I do, or what you're supposed to do. First thing you want to do is, once again, put down a layer of oats, because they also eat this. And you also allow the larva to uh, feed and move around in there. Then you take an egg crate, just like you would do with anything else. Any of those just put it in there. And I might another section off, give them a little bit more room to hide. Okay, so this is all set up for the beetles. So when those turn into the pupa, then they go to the beetles. Leave them in there until they're the beetles, because from what I understand, they will eat the cocoon stages. The so. Um, leave them separate to their beetles, then put the beetles in this. Let the beetles live in here until they start breeding and creating more larvae. And what happens, you'll find the larvae down in the oats. You'll see it crawling around, starting to move around. They'll be tiny, um, not like big super worms. They'll be a while if they get big. So once you start seeing that, you take the roaches out, so the beetles out of here, and put them into another clean one that you'll have already set up. Okay? And now the beetles will then be moved into that. And this one will start breeding, will start growing your feeder um, superworms. And then, then you just how you just keep moving them from one to another to another. And usually you have three, because then this would be starting to wear out. So you'll take the rest of these and put them in here, or you'll vice versa, and then 
clean this one out instead of to get it ready for the next set of beetles. So that when this one has the larva, you'll move the beetles into this one. You clean this one out, then for the beetles, you just keep rotating the three. It's how they always have three tubs. Now, I hope I explain this well, because it's a, a science stuff isn't my, my forte. It's more like in the building of these little enclosures and stuff like that. Um, so hopefully this will help you out and explain to you how I'm doing this and allow you to start your own superworm farm. Because one of the best parts of this hobby is the fact that it's rather inexpensive for the care of tarantulas. Just put them in their home, put them with dirt, feeders all breed themselves out. You're not buying a bunch of crickets and stuff like that all the time. It's really helpful just to have all this available. Like I said, this is really small. I will hopefully, this will take off and I'll start using much bigger tubs, but I don't want to take the rule up right now as I'm learning how to do this and practicing. So like I said, I hope this helps you. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will be putting, once again, a shout out video to another YouTuber that does tarantulas and videos that I like that you may be interested in. So please check that out at the end of the video. And as always, thank you for watching.